Hi everyone, Dan here. A few weeks ago I posted this animation of a 3D pixelated voxel style landscape and as I promised here is a tutorial to show you how to make this kind of geometry in Blender 2.8. Let's start with an overview of my scene. We have the main geometry, we have a camera that I use to make all the animations, so they are all camera movements. We have a background. The background object is a sphere that I use to have this very simple color on the background, while the lighting is given by an HDRI. Another important part of the animation, I guess, it was the depth of field effect. The depth of field effect is achieved activating depth of field for sure. These are my settings. Also, these are my classic um, settings for Eevee. And the depth of field is only visible when you are in a camera mode. So you are not gonna be able to see the depth of field in the normal PERSP or orthographic view. What's important to understand is that the depth of field needs to be set properly in order to give a, a realistic effect, a cinematographic and photorealistic effect. So you need to select your camera, you need to have an object, that's how I work with the depth of field, there are different ways you can do it but this is my way. The object I used, it's, uh, I call it focus, in reality is just a sphere, is this object here. You can move the object around. And let's say that you want this tower in focus, you need to move this object, which is my focus, as close as possible to that object. If I move my focus, Farther away, you can see now that the background is in focus and the foreground is out of focus in the same way if I move the object here, the effect is reversed. The object can be hidden because you don't want that in your scene. And you can play a little bit with the settings of the focus to, to have a narrower or longer depth of field. For example, 01, it's kind of very shallow depth of field. If I increase it, everything is in focus, but this depends on the scene you have. Um, as I wanted to achieve a kind of toy tilt shift effect, I kept it very low. Let's go back to, to see how to create this object. The first thing is a plane. So, created a plane. This is our plane, I gave it roughly the dimension, I'm going to try to replicate what we have on the scene, so I'll make it as wide and as large as my other one. I'm going to um, add the same material which is a normal material with just some roughness and the texture map, which is the image I used as inspiration to create the landscape. And then I'll start adding subdivision to the object. The more, the, the better, but that depends a lot on your computer specification. I would also add a subdivision surface modifier and I'll show you later why. I'm going to add a displace at this point and I need the texture to displace, which is going to be the same. You can have a different one, of course, using one for the color and one for the displacement. I use the same one. Let's go here and And use the same image we use for the color. You can see that there is a shape start 
performing on the surface. We just need to increase the strength, the displacement, which will give us already something interesting result. I want more resolution. Okay, it's looking better. And probably and let's go apply this to modifier and we'll add a remesh modifier mode is gonna be blocks of course scale is gonna be as big as possible and the resolution is given by this number be careful because you may completely crush your system it crashed mine a few times i'll go with seven and it's not enough i have to remove the disconnected pieces flag let's go with eight and now it's looking interesting i can probably go one step further okay i'll keep it like this One other thing you want to do, it's probably changing the scale of the whole object. Once you apply your modifier, you need to reapply the texture mapping because it's now no more in your object, which has a lot more faces. So it's not transferred to the final one. So once you select all the faces, you see, and I would go from the top screen, orthographic and project from view, bounce. And here we have a similar version. It's not exactly the same, probably I used slightly different parameters. It's a simple procedure. And depending on the starting geometry, you can achieve a completely different results. What I did wanted though, was that for each pixel of the picture, I would have had one cube. Instead, I now have, uh, for each cube, for each uh, block, I have multiple pixels. Instead, you can see the, the texture that it's basically wrapped around and stretch, stretched along the uh, long faces of the object. But the effect, it's quite good. In Blender 2.7, you could achieve this result with a simple add-on called Cubester. I contacted the author of the add-on, Jacob Morris. He answered me in a few hours, made a version of the add-on for 2.8. So you can download the add-on yourself and play with it, but I'm gonna show you how easier it is to make the same kind of landscape using this add-on. Here is how the add-on looks in 2.8. I think it's gonna change in the future, has a lot of different interesting features, but at the moment, the only one I'm going to use is the one to achieve the same result as the one in the animation. Below the image, I use the same image, of course, you decide the resolution, let's say, to create one block every 40 pixel, for example, Decide the height, I don't know, one meter. Uh, grid size, again, and then create object. And here it is our landscape. Created in no time, <laughs> almost instantly, few seconds, given an image. Let's activate our and I think I'm very happy with the result. I didn't have to fiddle with uh, subdivisions of the geometry, remesh and mapping and none of that. The image is clearly reduced in resolution and for each pixel a cube is basically built. The results is super clean, super fast, really it takes 
a couple of seconds I didn't speed up the video. Now you can keep working on this uh, geometry for different effects. As each cube is separated from each other you can do many more things. This is how fast it is to achieve a completely different look. Just changing the normal shading and also we can add for example a subdivision modifier and everything changes again. Now for example we can go from the top and we can extend the geometry. Scaling to create some kind of motion graphics effect or also we can go the other way it's like an image created with small points where each point is a color and then we can expand it a little bit have some kind of height depth so really here the options are so many as an example I created the same geometry let me show all of them so this one was the one I created manually where you can see the texture mapped on each block it's not ideal I didn't like that so much then we have one low resolution of the same created in one click with Cubester and then I created an higher resolution where I decided to inset the cubes and having them not touching each other so there's like a gap between them and this creates a completely different look. More realistic in a way, but it's just different and I really love it. Again, you can play with the scale to create zoom effects. I'm going to show you another test made with another image the link of this image is it's in the description links are in the description you can see this one is the one created by Cubester very clean and neat and this one is the one created manually now in this case I can't say which one is the best I think it it depends it's important knowing how to achieve similar results in different ways so you can then choose which one you prefer for example here you have smaller details that are given by the texture but then the strong contrast in the image is given by the geometry and this has been achieved with the manual version Cubester instead as it reduced the resolution of the image he won't get all the smaller details but then again the results it's cleaner and it's more similar to a voxel object last one I'm going to show you start from this image using same technique so displace and remesh so subdivide displace and remesh as you can see again here I don't have much geometry but I have details given by texture and this is the version created with one click with Cubester much much cleaner more organic I really much prefer this one. I also want to show you this one with the bevel effect on the cubes. Okay, 
now it's something that I really, really like. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment below for any question about this technique or if you want to suggest a topic for the next tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please, 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 please subscribe to this channel, share this video, ask your friends, families, pets, clones, bots, ask them all to subscribe to this channel as well so that I can finish paying my Lamborghini. Thank you very much. Ciao.